Hello and welcome to the Integrated Health Convention 2019 online interviews. Today, we're going to find out more about uh, SERPA. <laughs> and uh, this is Georgie Oldfield, who's speaking at the Integrative Health Convention 2019 uh, on the weekend of the 5th and 6th of October at the Park Plaza Victoria in central London. So this is Georgie. Hello. Uh, he's, hello hi, Georgie. So she's a physiotherapist and the founder of the organ organization SERPA, which deals with chronic pain. SERPA runs courses online which teach health professionals to integrate SERPA's recovery approach to chronic pain within their own work. Uh, they also run educational and self-empowering online recovery programs for people with chronic pain and other persistent health problems. And they can be found at www.serpa.org. And I'll put the links below. Thanks. So, uh, Georgie, welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. Great. Uh, should we begin today by letting the audience know a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Yes. Uh, well, my background is physiotherapy. So I've been a physiotherapist for, I hate to say this, uh, nearly 36 years now. <laughs> um, but the way I work has changed uh, quite significantly, especially over the last uh, 15 to 20 years. Um, I was in the NHS until 2005 and then developed a really interest in pain. And so I left the NHS, set up my own practice then, and then uh, came across the work I do now in 2007. And that's changed things a lot with the way that I work with people with chronic pain. Mm. So I was going to ask you how you got interested in what you do and the story behind what, uh, how you start, started doing what you do now. Mm. I think initially I was working uh, as a community physiotherapist and being, becoming increasingly frustrated with the lack of uh, treatments we had for people in pain who couldn't get to a, a department, for example. And I began to become more and more interested in treating pain and I started using complementary therapies. Um, so it started with uh, reflex therapy, then acupuncture, and as that was, as I was training more and more of acupuncture, I was doing um, adapted reflex therapy in spinal pain, which I found very effective. Uh, and then I began to learn um, and use a, um, a therapy called Bowen, um, or a form of, of Bowen called neurostructural integration technique. And that ended up being one of the main treatments that I was using for people with pain when I set up my own business. Uh, but gradually I was becoming more and more um, frustrated and uh, confused by why so many people, for example, would present with pain and yet they'd had no accident, they'd no, had no injury, they'd wake up with pain, for example, or they had uh, clear uh, prolapsed discs, for example, on MRI scans, but they didn't necessarily fit with the symptoms, um, or even if they did, they actually recovered very uh, completely with my very gentle treatments. So things like that and people who um, would have an injury and yet they did this, it was something like picking up a pen or something they normally did without any problem. So I began to question more and more because I was just frustrated with feeling that the, the general consensus was we should be able to manage the pain. And so we were treating the symptoms of chronic pain and with the emphasis of you've got to learn to live with this and manage the pain. And that frustrated me. So for a couple of years, I was researching this and trying to find out more. <coughs> some more answers really to all these questions. And in the end, I came across the work of Dr. John Sarno in New York, um, read all about his work, started, worked on me first, resolved all my recurring health problems, um, and then uh, just learned as much as I could on my own and started recommending his books to patients. And the results I was seeing was making me realize that this is not just something that I could just look at and maybe use every now and again. I realized that the potential was huge, but there was nobody doing this work in the UK or Europe. So I ended up contacting Dr. Sarno and in 2007 ended up going over and spending some time with him, shadowing him, finding out more about his work, came back and really that my whole career and my me personally, the way I live my life, because it's a very holistic approach, um, was completely changed. And uh, I've carried on and become more, more of a specialist in this field um, since then. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure many of the listeners would have heard, uh, read up about Dr. Sano's um, uh, TMS and, and his approach to pain. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's great to have you here to talk Thank about you. it. And in fact, I was just reading your book, which is a lot easier to read than John Sano's <laughs> much thicker volumes of... Uh, of books actually so so thanks thanks for your book uh, so a book called uh, chronic pain i think 
What, your what, chronic pain, your key to recovery. Your chronic pain, your key to recovery. Because there was no book. All the books were written in Amer by Americans. And this was part of this was actually helping people realize that they didn't in Europe and England, they didn't have to go over to America or keep contacting people in America, that we do provide this approach here. And in fact, that's also why I set up uh, SERPA, the training organization, to actually help other health professionals integrate this approach into their own work without having to go to the extent that I did, which was returning to conferences. I think four times I uh, went to America, attended conferences, shadowed some of the other specialists in this field, and have been uh, uh, very involved in the global um, movement in this work. And thankfully, with all the pain science and other evidence that's been building over the last 20 years, we're now able to really provide a more uh, grounded and evidence-based foundation and understanding for this work, which sadly Dr. Sano didn't have at that time, but he was the pioneer and really absolutely was getting some fantastic results. Um, so it would have been very challenging, was very challenging for him. It's still challenging for all of us to help people realize that this is not necessarily a physical problem and that we need to look at some of the un unresolved uh, uh, maybe traumas that people have had or their personalities or any stress that they've had and start helping them identify the links and triggers so that we can help them then move forward. And as you said, you know, my book, other books, sometimes it's literally about understanding it and people can um, recover just from doing that. But we're here if people need more help. Georgie, how many SERPA practitioners are there in the UK? We SERPA trained um, practitioners, we've got I think about 120 odd um, now. So initially it was a, a physical course, so I was doing all the training. Um, last year we moved it all, all online um, to reach out to more people because many people were asking it, but also to just make it simplify it a bit. And, and certainly in an online course, there's a lot more information you can include. So we can, we've brought in a lot of work from the other professors in in America, for example, as well as those, um, you know, Dr. Bruce Lipton's work um, and other um, other work that is related to trauma um, really has been fantastic to include. And Donna Jackson Nakazawa, who has <clears throat> written books about the um, adverse childhood experiences, for example. Um, so it's great to be able to add all that in so people can add to their learning as they're going along. And then we, we now have a, a membership as well so that we provide support and peer support and we do monthly webinars um, with specialists in other fields, anything that's going to provide some support for our practitioners in actually integrating it into their work. And, and who can be a SERPA practitioner? Anybody who's a, either a health professional or a coach who already has their own, um, been trained and qualified in their own professional body and in short, um, mm. because this is a CPD course, it's not actually a training in itself. Um, so we have people who are counsellors and psychotherapists, we have hypnotherapists, um, other alternative um, therapists, physios, osteopaths, doctors, um, as well as some health coaches. And in fact, we've had, I've had a handful of people who've been, who've worked with me to resolve their own pain and then have wanted to become SERPA practitioners. So they've ended up going on and becoming coaches, learning how to become a health coach, get that qualification. Um, and then they are regulated by their own professional body and then they come and do our training as well. So they integrate that then. Wonderful. So in October, when you join us in, uh, at a Park Plaza at the Intergroup Health Convention, you're going to talk about chronic pain, uh, a new approach. Yes, primarily chronic pain. We, we do treat various other persistent conditions, but um, certainly the talk will be about chronic pain and starting and really looking at the evidence base. So the evidence base to help us recognize that we cannot continue to just look at the physical side of chronic pain and that actually the evidence that shows recovery is possible. And so there's a lot of different um, studies that I'll be sharing and really looking at um, studies related to the lack of correlation between um, pain and spinal degeneration, for example, and that's irrefutable now. Uh, the link between adverse childhood experiences and chronic pain in later life and other things like that and beginning to have more of an understanding about how we can, as health professionals, whether mental health professionals or physical um, therapists, how we can actually help people um, focus on recovery rather than just on, the, um, on managing their pain and therefore being able to really look at all aspects of their life. And in all our talks, we always ask the speakers to see if you can we can give something to the audience to take away with them. 
what do you think the audience will take away from your, your talk? Hopefully to start uh, be more aware of maybe understanding the links and triggers for people's pain, beginning to ask questions like um, what was going on in your life at the time that the pain, the patient's pain came on, because often we don't ask that. I think we're beginning to, but again, really making that connection with what was actually going on in their life. Was it a particularly stressful time or was it after a stressful time had finished? Um, and also, was there any time in their childhood where they felt unsupported? Because it, even just asking those two questions of their, pa of their patients can help them begin to identify who might benefit from this work, as well as uh, sharing probably a couple of strategies um, that I use with every single patient that I work with. Um, to, because it's all, always about, it's such, so, so simple. So it's about education, self-empowerment, and so a lot of what I will share in the talk will be helpful for all the health professionals to then be able to understand them and use within their patient with their patients anyway. Thank you very much. So having thought about the Integrative Health Convention, where our audience will be made of doctors, therapists, and the public, where do you see um, SERPA and the approach fitting in in holistic integrated health? Well, although we don't specifically call it holistic, it's certainly integrative and we involve a whole load of different strategies. We, we look at the whole patient. We don't just look at the symptom and treat that symptom. So as I've said, this is about understanding their past, what's going on in their life now, looking at um, helping them look at their lives emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally, see, checking that they have some, a balance in their lives. Um, and making sure they have purpose in their life, for example. So there's a lot of different areas that we work with, uh, and it includes a lot of different uh, strategies and approaches, for example, mindfulness and cognitive behavioral um, work, emotional awareness and expression. So there's a lot of different things we're working on rather than just uh, a symptom, for example. Very good, thank you. So I'm asking one last question, uh, Georgie that as a therapist for and teacher for many years, um, what do you think in particular is the key to healing and what do you do? I think if it was just one thing, it's about uh, helping our patients develop more emotional awareness because by developing emotional awareness and becoming, um, they can develop their resilience, but it also allows them to then express how they're feeling and become much more aware of being able to deal with not just past unresolved emotions, but avoided emotions day to day. Sorry about that. Um, but it, yeah, it helps them deal with the past stuff as well as the day to day emotions that we tend to just ignore because we're too busy, too busy on the go or overthinking in our heads. So to be able to pause, mindfully be aware of how we're feeling they become much more in tune with the emotions and therefore they don't need the symptoms when they're actually being more emotionally aware. So I think that's probably the main thing that we would focus on. Mm. So to question the emotions and their feelings and how Absolutely. they're reacting. To become much more emotionally aware um, mm. because more often than not, we're just not at all. Absolutely. We're focused on the body and not how we're actually feeling. Well, it looks like this talk's going to be amazing. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Rory. Uh, You're welcome. Thanks to the audience for taking your time to watch this interview. And so remember to get your tickets early. They are limited from our website. So uh, do follow the links below. We are the Integrative Health Convention at the Park Plaza Victoria in London on the 5th and 6th of October 2019. You can use the discount code VIDEO5, which will give you a 5% discount as a gift from us to you for sharing your time with us. So when we see you in October in London, you're going to speak, meet uh, Georgie, myself, and all our amazing speakers there. It'll be great to see you there. Thank you very much. Bye.